Today we're gonna to talk about the new Alienware 17 inch R5 edition. This is the newest, latest model of this machine. We're gonna do a quick unboxing. I'm gonna show you the features and design of this machine and we're gonna talk about the uh, thermal throttling and current power limit issues that we've had in the past with these machines. And we're gonna find out if the new cooling technology that the Alienware said that they implemented in this machine is actually working and in effect. And I'm gonna show you how to do an upgrades on these machines and we'll go over some gaming tests to show you what this machine actually runs like. So first, let's do a quick unboxing, take a look at what's inside, and uh, we'll talk about the features and examine the machine in detail. All right, let's take a look. There's a white box with a dismantled Alienware machine on there, kind of cool. And there's our machine. It's a uh, darker version this time around, which I think looks a lot nicer. And then we have Alienware's origin story here, telling you guys how they got started in 1996. A quick start guide, nothing too useful there, and, and warranty information. And the quick start guide, you'll just find where the buttons are laid out and nothing too useful. Here's our power brick. This one's a 240 watt power brick. It's designed to charge the laptop. It's fairly large, so keep in mind if you don't like big power bricks, gaming laptops always have large power bricks. Unless you get one that has a U-based processor, those ones will be a lot smaller, but this one is a six core CPU, so it's gonna need a lot more juice. And the fact that it has a 1080 in there, which is quite amazing. And multiple drive bays. You can have four storage drives. It's a lot darker, a lot nicer, and it actually does feel a little bit more sturdy and has extra weight. So this one here is 15 pounds. And the reason it's 15 pounds is because it uses extra components to keep it cool. I always thought the back side of the machine looked really cool. I do like how you can open up the screen to 170 degrees. It gives you a lot of access to your device and you don't feel limited. I can tell you that the hinge can take a serious beating. It feels very sturdy. They've even used some magnets to reinforce its closure so it's not gonna randomly open up. It feels like a device from the past trying to be in the future. We have one USB port on the side, USB 3.0. We have some ventilation on the sides and on the back. There's a gargantuan system on the back. This makes the 17 inch laptop a little bit larger than normal. We have ethernet, display port, HDMI, Thunderbolt, graphics amplifying port, and a power plug. On the other side, we have a lock, additional vent, and a USB-C. We have a USB 3.0, a microphone and headphone jack. Then on the front of the device, we have some front-facing speakers, which is a nice addition. A couple years back, they used to be under the device, so they would get muffled. And then at the top, we have a nice Alienware logo. First game up is going to be Grand Theft Auto, running on Max Graphics 4K, getting about 80 to 100 frames a second. This game runs really, really well on this machine. There isn't any issues. I tried to run around and go in areas where there would be lots of draw distance things rendered. Like inside a building, you're getting about 130 frames, but once you're outside, the lowest I've ever seen it is about 70 frames per second, which is uh, pretty good, all things considered. And uh, there's no hiccups and anything like that. Plus, this features a new screen technology that prevents screen tearing so it's extra smooth gameplay which I really 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 like. Here I'm running around getting into a vehicle, doing some test driving, gaining some speed. Let's see if I can crash into something. That's what happens when you use your phone while driving. <laughs> Alright, here's my rust base. It's a two by two. Got various crates. I actually found this base decaying on the uh, West server and uh, joined it and then just put a bunch of doors on it. Got some garage doors earlier set up in there. So Rust was a game that I was really worried about and the first few times I played it I did experience some power limit throttling and occasionally thermal throttling. Now the thing to keep in mind is that it doesn't affect the gameplay at all. What it does is it decreases some of the gigahertz from about 4 gigahertz down to about 2.8 is the lowest that I've seen it but it doesn't cause the game to have any hiccups which is the thing that I was really worried about. On previous Alienware machines, on Alienware 13 and 15, I actually have seen like severe thermal throttling and power limit throttling. So if you haven't heard the terms, power limit throttling is where the power brick can't supply enough power to the machine, and thermal throttling is when the CPU overheats. So when it does happen, this new cooling technology actually keeps it in check, and you're able to play the game without any interruptions. 
even though it is happening in the background, it's just happening in a way that doesn't affect your game. So every game I ran on it runs fine, there isn't any issues. And some of the older legacy titles like Counter-Strike for instance get like 230 frames a second. Just some unbelievable frame rates. Some of the more demanding titles will get you maybe about 50 frames per second during intense moments, but other than that, it's smooth sailing. Examining the look and feel, it has a nice textured rubberized feel here on the front. Actually feels really nice, I do like it quite a bit. It's nice to rest your palm there while gaming and it doesn't get too hot either. The trackpad has to be my biggest disappointment with the machine and the reason for that is that it's just small. Never mind the fact that it has actual buttons. I would prefer that they remove the buttons and just have a much larger trackpad. Hopefully we'll see this in the future. When you're tracking around, it does use the precision driver, so it is a lot faster and smoother than you would expect while scrolling around, but it still just feels kind of small and dated. I do like the color options though, how you can change the colors and all. The keyboard is definitely a strength for this device. It feels really clicky, there's a lot of key travel, and you're never wondering why random buttons are being pushed because you always feel like you have good control while gaming. I haven't had any issues with this keyboard at all. I actually really, really like it. You can also change the coloring and the RGB lighting to any color you want. You can make them flicker, you can turn them down, or you can just turn them off altogether if you want. It's really up to you. You can customize it how you want. Alienware also did add some buttons on the side that you can customize to do whatever you want. And because the device is a 17 inch device, it's pretty large, so they added a numpad. I think the number pad's great if you're gonna do any kind of data entry or Excel. The power button of this device is an Alienware button, which I think is really cool. It used to be a lot larger and they've made it significantly smaller. Probably because people used to press it easily and maybe it was just distracting. They did add some uh, gloss finish to the logo and the button area and well, gloss finishes do have a type of reflective surface onto it. It is really reflective. When examining the screen, we can really see that LED lighting just kind of stand out. There's also a very thick bezel around the screen, which I'm not sure if I approve of, but it's there. If anything, you can think of it as a protective layer to protect your device's screen. I always thought that the rear of the device always looked really nice. They have this uh, ventilated mesh area to really give it extra airflow, and these nice rubberized feet that really prop up the device. They feel really, really nice, and they're extremely sturdy, and they also enhance the look of the device too. I had one of my subscribers tell me once that I have a foot fetish because I like to examine the feet on a device, but part of it is if the feet don't make the device tall enough, there won't be enough airflow. So it's kind of an important thing to consider. We have also seven screws holding the laptop back panel together. So I use an iFixit kit to take it apart because iFixit gives you a lot of really nice tools. The goal here with iFixit is to give you the ability to take apart any device that you want with one of their kits. So if you if you have any tech needs that, if you have a tech need where there's some kind of trouble and the screen is broken on your device or you have to replace a button or a keyboard or something's wrong with your device, iFixit gives you the tools necessary to fix it yourself, which I think is awesome. All right, now that we have the back panel removed, we can take a look at the hardware here and examine it and see what kind of hardware they have. I'll also show you how to install new hardware as well. Here we have a SAN disk. We've got about 400 megabytes read and 200 megabytes write. It's not a bad drive. It's definitely not the fastest, but definitely not the slowest. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. There's one screw holding it together, so get yourself a screwdriver and just unscrew it. And normally these drives are supposed to pop open, but if they don't, you can always kind of pry it open yourself. And remember, you have to kind of make it go up before you can remove the drive, because you have to insert the drives diagonally, and that's kind of just how it works. So pry it up if you need to, if it doesn't pop up normally. And then remove the drive and get ready to insert your new drive. Inserting the new drive is literally the same way. Insert it diagonally, pop the screw back on there, 
and you're good to go. Next up, we have the RAM. RAM's a little bit different. It doesn't really rely on screws, and I'm not sure why they didn't make the M2 slots like this, but essentially you just have these little arms that are holding the RAM stick together. You pry both of them open, and then you use uh, your hand to just kind of move the RAM stick up and then pull it out. The other thing to worry about RAM is to make sure that the notch is aligned. You see how I'm trying to put it back and there's a notch and it's not aligning and it's not going in? Well, you have to flip over the RAM to the other side there, just like that, to be able to insert the RAM because if you don't flip it over, it's not going to line up and you can't insert it. Once it's inserted diagonally, you can then just kind of push down and you push kind of through those little metal hands and then it locks itself in place and it's nice and sturdy. There it is again from the side. And the type of RAM that they use is Samsung 2400 MHz RAM. You can also customize it to be 2600 MHz. Here we have the SATA drive. This is a HGST drive and it uses 7200 RPM. So it's definitely not the slowest, but it's a little bit faster than what you can find in most laptops. It's held together with four screws. Remove those screws to access the drive. Now keep in mind that there's a tray that the drive is in. So once you remove those four screws, there's actually four more screws you have to remove from the sides of the actual tray. And be careful not to pull too hard because there is a little wire there at the bottom left that's connected to the motherboard and it's pretty fragile so you don't want to rip it. So kind of keep the drive where it's at and then just remove the screws on the side to gain access to the drive and then to attempt to remove the drive because you still have to unplug it from the SATA connector. The SATA connector gives you power and data transfer. Once the screws are removed, you can kind of pop it open. You see that little latch there? That's what was preventing you from removing the SATA connector. So you definitely do have to take all eight screws out to remove the SATA connector and put your own drive in there if you do want to upgrade it. I actually recommend putting in a Samsung drive in there. I use the Samsung uh, 850 Evo. It's a great drive. It's really fast. It's cheap and they're pretty much everywhere now. So you can buy them online. You can buy them in stores and it's just a good drive overall. I highly recommend you put one in because it's going to be about 10 times faster than a normal SATA drive that uses hard drive disk. There's also a PCIe SSD slot. And this is where you put your ultra fast SSDs in. So this is an NVMe SSD. The reason it's fast is because it interfaces with the PCI Express bus, which is the same lane that your video cards run on. So it's so much data that it can access. It's so quick. It's, it's almost as fast as RAM itself. That's how fast it is. That's still a stretch to say that it's as fast as RAM, but let's just say it's about half the speed of RAM. But pretty much all you need to know is RAM is one of the fastest components on your drive. So to have a storage drive even remotely close to the speed of, of RAM is just unbelievable. So go ahead and insert your NVMe drive after you've removed the screw. Pop it in diagonally and then just kind of push it down. And remember there's going to be a notch on this one too. So. so push it down and then put the screw in and you'll be good to go to uh, get this drive running. There's no denying it that a 17 inch laptop is going to be pretty loud, especially one that has, you know, GTX 1080 and a six core processor. There's no way to get around that. But what you can get around is which brand you choose. Alienware actually decreased the sound um, DBAs by about five or six DBA and the previous edition did have a much higher pitch whine to it. So it is a little bit quieter now, which is nice than the previous generations. Plus you got the new CPU architecture, which keeps things a little bit cooler. You can expect about 40% increase in multi-core and uh, about you know 15% in single core performance increase on the CPU. In terms of heat, the palm rests are pretty um, Pretty cool however the back ventilation system is gonna just be packing tons of heat so make sure you use it on a table or get like some kind of little mini table that you can put on your lap maybe even a laptop cooler it's possible you could position it to work but it's gonna be difficult to do so I'm really glad that they fixed the thermal throttling and power limit issues 
with these machines. Now I have seen a very small amount of thermal throttling with these machines, um, but however, it doesn't get in the way of the gaming and that's the beauty of it. So on the previous editions, like the R4 and R3, whenever there was current power limit throttling or thermal throttling, the machine would significantly decrease its performance to try to keep itself cool. And in an effect, the performance was uh, lowered, you know, in a way that really had a detrimental effect on the game. Now when it does it, it doesn't do it as often and it only decreases the performance a tiny little bit. So you're still getting all the performance that you basically paid for and the new cooling solution really does work. So that's one thing I'm really happy about. So good job Alienware and Delphi on that uh, because it is important to uh, keep the machine cool. Uh, I did notice that they removed the little notch here and that they added an additional slot for uh, M2 or NVMe SSD drives, which I think is cool. However, I would really like to see in the future even more slots and perhaps maybe in an additional uh, 2.5 millimeter uh, slot for like laptop hard drives. Because for the size of this thing, this thing is it's gargantuan, it's pretty hefty in size and it's, you know, there's no reason why it shouldn't have more room for upgrades. Now, I also noticed that they didn't really put a lot of ports on this machine. Uh, if you know, the 13 inch has the same amount of ports as the 17 inch, and this is completely unacceptable because you're paying a lot of money for a device that has basically no ports. In the past, when you paid for a 17 inch Alienware laptop, you'd get either three to four ports uh, of USB and that was a good amount. You were able to plug in everything you needed and now I'm struggling to plug in headphones, external drive and a wireless mouse. Th that requires three USB ports and now I need to carry around my hub with me. It's a good thing I have one but if you end up buying this machine, know that if you use more than two USB ports that you're gonna have some trouble. So get yourself a hub or maybe even consider getting a, you know, a different laptop. That's kind of, I mean, if it's a deal breaker. Overall though, I love the sturdiness of the design. It, it, it's definitely the best, most well-built laptop that I've held that's a gaming laptop because most gaming laptops are extremely ugly and they have just way too much plastic. But this one, it's got premium materials which I really like and enjoy. And since this is the GTX 1080 model, you're not gonna have any problems playing any type of game. And essentially this laptop no longer has any weaknesses. In the past, it's Achilles heel was that you'd get a laptop that would have bad paste on it and then you you would thermal throttle because your machine's overheating so it decreases its performance and you would have stuttering. So since we don't have that, we're basically good to go and play all of our games. I wanted to thank you guys for watching this video. It's been awesome making it and uh, I really enjoyed this awesome laptop. So if you guys have any questions, please leave a, leave a comment down below because I will be replying to all questions so I definitely want to talk to you guys and connect. And if you have any concerns on which laptop to get or what type of hardware, any kind of tech related need, definitely be sure to leave a comment down below so I will be replying to all comments. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and I hope you guys subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.